Joining me right now is former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Mexico, and the Philippines. Uh, he is also former de Deputy Director of State, a former National Intelligence Director under Bush 43, and currently Vice Chairman for McClarty Associates. John Negroponte with us this morning. Good to see you, sir. Thanks very much for Good joining morning. us. What morning. would you expect to come out of this? We're about to see the President sign uh, the USMCA deal a a a as a former ambassador there. W what, you, what is your take on this signing? Well, and how important this, this deal is. Well, first of all, it's good. I think it's an important deal. Let's not forget also it's the last day that Mr. Peña Nieto is in office. So I think that's important too because uh, if it weren't signed today, uh, we would run the risk of uh, the new president, uh, uh, Andres Manuel uh, Obrador, uh, trying to uh, reopen some of the issues because he's a populist and he was, uh, you know, not as. Uh, uh, favorable to free trade as uh, his predecessor. So that's important. Second thing, I think uh, we shouldn't underestimate the ability of North America to be some kind of a powerhouse platform out there on the global economy, uh, both uh, with trade and goods, uh, energy, cooperation between us, and so forth. So I think it's much more important and better that we get along rather than being at odds with each other. So I think this will help patch up and uh, smooth over some tensions that we've had for the last. A uh, year and a half or so between Canada, the United States, and Mexico. So I take that to be a positive as well. So no. makes me feel good. Last point: <laughs> almost 26 years ago to this date, um, I witnessed the signing of the NAFTA between George Bush and and uh, Brian Mul Mulroney and Carlos Salinas de, de Gortari in San Antonio, Texas. So you know, it makes me feel good to watch this happening. I bet. Me meanwhile, you, you talk about the U.S. Power being the powerhouse, China also a powerhouse. Uh, where are you on this deal? National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow floated a possible trade truce between the U.S. and China on Tuesday. Uh, Ambassador, he highlighted uh, this piece from Tuesday's briefing in, in terms of what remains what are the issues that the president will not do a deal unless the U.S. is positioned well. Do you think there is a chance for a deal with China or an agreement? Well, I was out there a few weeks ago and they told me they had some proposals ready, but they didn't want to table them before the midterm elections because they might have ended up just being dead on arrival because just about anything would be rejected at that point. So we've got the midterms behind us. It is not in our interest to have a uh, continuing trade war with China, the second largest economy in the world, and an economy with which we're uh, somewhat integrated. Unlike Russia, where we have absolutely minimal trade with China, we're right up there, uh, you know, in the hundreds of billions of dollars. So we need to work something out. Otherwise, you're going to start feeling the pain. Uh, China's feeling the pain already, and I think we're going to as well. So I think it's good that they work something out. They obviously can't settle everything. Uh, in one dinner in Buenos Aires, but they can uh, give us a sense of direction, uh, and I hope it's in a positive uh, sense, and that uh, the Chinese maybe will uh, uh, make some offers in the areas of uh, the merchandise trade deficit, the intellectual property issues, uh, the investment requirements that they have that will be enough to form the basis for some kind of continuing dialogue between us. You know, somebody on this program yesterday made the point that, look, China has come a long way in terms of its own innovation. You've got people there coming up with new ideas, new technologies to enable China to become number one in things like blockchain technology or robotics, et cetera, in their 2025 plan. So maybe China understands that intellectual property theft is wrong. I mean, do you think that they are going to show any willingness to change the behavior that this president has highlighted? Uh, I, well, I mean, they've certainly heard us. I can't, uh, you know, I can't predict for sure, but, and, and they're, you know, they're rational people. Uh, they've built their country to where it is now in, a, in an incredibly short period of time since 1978. They got a lot of people looking at these issues. Yeah, I think it's possible. The other point you make is excellent, which is they've, They've got a lot of new uh, innovation of their own now, and they're going to have more. I, I know some uh, top-notch American universities who are leery of uh, cooperation with China on the one hand, but on the other hand, don't want to miss out on some of the uh, work that the Chinese themselves are doing uh, in the area of innovation. So, uh, you know, it cuts both ways.
Ambassador uh, Brian Brenberg here. You know, the president is walking into this negotiation having created, I think, deliberately a lot of uncertainty about the tack he's going to take. I mean, Peter Navarro was out. He's back at the table now for dinner. Do you see the uncertainty he's creating uh, playing to his favor in terms of maybe getting something out of China that otherwise wouldn't have been the case? Uh, possibly so. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a signal that he doesn't uh, plan to relinquish uh, his firm line uh, just at the drop of a hat. I think it's a, a message, look, you better have something, you know, that we can really uh, seriously consider here. So, yeah, I think that's good. On the other hand, the Chinese have been thinking this through now for the past several months. So I suspect they're going to come prepared for this meeting. Yeah. Real, real quick, Ambassador, before you go, what would be a victory for this president out of this G20 meeting, in your view? Well, besides signing the MCA, which is a positive thing, I th something that could result in a way forward, a framework, uh, if you will, an architecture, as they've been talking about in the Kudlow story, uh, for uh, the, a way forward to continue talking about trade with China without uh, having to implement these additional tariffs.